The Museum of the Occupation of Latvia offers interactive activities for students and young people indoors in the museum's exhibition, outdoors, where historical events actually occurred, and in schools. With the help of museum guides, students improve their insight and understanding of recent historical events. The exhibition presents Latvia's 50-year period as a country occupied in succession by the regimes of the Soviet Union, Nazi Germany, and then again by the Soviet Union. The occupation of Latvia in World War II resulted in the loss of about a third of its population. Tens of thousands lost their lives in the war, the Holocaust, and the inhuman conditions of the Gulag and Nazi concentration camps. Nearly a tenth of Latvia's population left Latvia westward at war's end. Latvia regained independence only in 1991. The museum has gathered more than 2,200 video recordings of eyewitness accounts of experiences during the occupation period. The museum's collection contains nearly 50,000 documents, photos, objects, and memorabilia related to the occupation period. These spoons belong to the Guava family. On the 14th of June 1941, the family was deported from Riga. This spoon they took with them, but this one remained in Latvia with a grandmother who was not deported. The spoon is testimony of the harsh forced settlement conditions in Siberia, because it was used not only for eating, but its edge was sharpened to serve as a knife for peeling potatoes. To assist Latvian history teachers, the museum's education department organizes seminars on controversial historical issues of the 20th century. Students are invited to take part in competitions, to study the history of their family and the neighborhood in order to better understand the occupation period. Information on the education department activities is available on the website www.omip.lv. The website also offers educational materials and describes opportunities for school classes to visit the museum. Thanks to special donations, the museum can cover a part of the travel expenses to the museum. In schools, history is most often taught from textbooks. The teacher talks and may also show pictures. At the museum, you can pick up a historical object, touch it, and be at the place where the events actually occurred. We have adapted museum activities to various age groups of students, so that the youngest are physically more actively engaged, while the older students are more involved in cognitive processes. Merely making a trip to Riga is a special event, particularly for those who live quite far from Riga, and we provide support for the students financially and emotionally and in every other possible way. And when students plan come to the museum, we communicate with them in advance so that they can prepare questions at home about the topic they want to investigate at the museum. They also interview their parents or grandparents or research the history of a certain site. Thus develops an overall picture from the family history to the local history to the general history of Latvia and the world, which they learn more at the museum. The museum also offers to display, free of charge, one of its traveling exhibitions in Latvian schools or community centers. The museum has become a very popular destination for foreign tourists. It is also visited by the official state guests. In the near future, the museum will undergo significant changes. Its permanent building at the Latvian Rifleman Square will open its doors after reconstruction as the building for the future. It was designed by the Latvian-American architect Gunnar Birkerts, who describes it metaphorically as the progression from the dark past to the bright and enlightened future. The building for the future will accommodate a new modern exhibition and provide space for comprehensive museum activities. For now, we invite you to visit the museum's temporary exhibition at Rainje Boulevard 7 to gain a clear picture of Latvia's recent history.